Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to my new setup on my channel. Ninja, I'm talking about my Ninja Warriors. So we're going to start off this series um, with Ninja Sun The Beginning. Now, if you guys have not watched, I do have a video um, that me and my best friend um, Ashley did um, a week ago. If you guys is already out, go ahead and check it out. It's on the channel. He gives his description of how he likes Ninja Sagittarius, why he wanted to be Ninja Aries, and all that good stuff. So we both had a, a in depth conversation about it. But he's not the only one that's gonna you know be a, that's gonna be coming through, talking about the book, how he likes it, how he thinks of his characters, his character. And what do he think is going to go after that? And then we talked about our friendship and everything. So he would not be the only one. Um, I have my other four, my other three friends coming through. So just hold on, hold tight. We're going to be, you know, we're going to talk about it all. So today I'm going to give you guys my take on Ninja Sun, why I created him, and what is his role in the um, in the book? So, most of you already know, and I talked about this at nauseum on my uh, when I was still doing my reviews, that Ninja Sun basically was created when I was in high school, right before I graduated. I went to all four of my friends and you know told them what I wanted to do. And I told them, you know, when I get the concept and the characters down, that I will make sure they will have a character. Because I really, the premises behind me creating this was because I um, I knew it was going to be the last time that I was going to be around all four of them like that. So I wanted to create something that was going to, you know, stick out as a brotherhood, something that was tangible that I could keep close to me as my, you know, as our relationships changed, but not for the bet from not for the worse, but for the better that, you know, I could, these characters would be us, but just in, uh, in, you know, fantasy form. And I had told each and every last one of them, but the thing was, uh, with Cornelius and Princess, they never got a chance to find out that's what I was doing for them because I had lost contact with Princess literally a month or so after um, graduation. So, Cornelius, I lost contact with him in 2005. Was it 2000? No, 2004. And that's when I really solidified the characters. The characters were, you know, written down. The characters had their backstories. The characters were ready to go. All I needed to do was find the people to help me publish. So I lost contact with those two during that time. But then I lost contact with all four of my friends. But Ashley was the only one that I did not really lose contact with because um, during that time we didn't have backup, you know, backup features on the phone, so, like, if anything happened, you can always go back and get your, um, you can go get back and get your contacts, you can go back and make sure, you know, your phone, you know, we didn't have that back then, not back in 2005, that was still, you know, some phones had it, which was the smartphones, like the blue, um, the Blackberries didn't have a Blackberry, so, um, and the Blackberries are not, they were really small and I really didn't like them. So I lost contact with them all. I got back in contact with Ashley immediately because I had him on Facebook, told him what happened. And what happened was my niece at the age of, uh, she was the, um, like six or seven months. She came into my room and she was a little sneaky devil. I, I wanted to, Y'all, I was so mad with her this day. I was putting my number, I was um, putting my contacts into my phone. And I took a break. I hadn't even got to the C's yet. And I was, I had just put, I think I had just got to Ashley. I think I had just, right before I got to Ashley, I had stopped. And she came into my room. She looking all sneaky and all innocent. And I was like, 
when she does that and she put her hands behind her back and she go like this, you know she up to no good. You knew it. And I was like, what do you want? I'm like, why are you even in here? <laughs> so, she saw my phone. And mind you, this is not the new phone. This was the old phone. She saw it, grabbed it, ran, and threw it in the toilet. I was so mad because I just told you I did not get a chance to program all the numbers in the phone. She took it and threw it in the toilet. She she almost went in behind it. I promise y'all. And I was staying with my mom at the time. And she literally was about to go in that toilet. And my mom told me, don't mess with her. I said, do you know she threw my phone in the toilet? So... I had to try to reach out to all of them, but I lost Jamie, Cornelius. I had already, you know, lost Princess, but I was looking for him at that time, but I had already lost him. So that made three people I had to look for. And it took me 15 years to find those two, Cornelius and Jamie, but it took me almost near 30 no, it wasn't 30. Was it 30? I think it was It's close to 30 years to find Prentice. Because Prentice was nowhere on social media anywhere. Neither was Jamie. Now, Cornelius, I found him on uh, classmate.com back in, uh, I think it was 2000. And I'm going to tell y'all what inspired this. Um, so I found Cornelius back in 2000 and nine I want to say I want to say it was 2009 2010 I just I just recently found Jamie and Prentice I found those two back uh, like two weeks um, apart from each other back in 2022 so I and uh, the anniversary for them is coming up next month because I found both of them literally two weeks apart and I was so happy, but what brought this on was back in um, back in 1998, I was on a phone call with Jamie, and he and I was talking, and I all of a sudden had this like dream while I was awake. It was a dream that all five of us, all five of us, me, Jamie, Ashley, Cornelius, and Prentice. All five of us was in the woods. We came to this house, and guys, it's not true, but the dream was true. And this is how uh, you'll understand how I, you know, lost my friends. And it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't on bad terms. It was more so on, you know, this dream predicted it. So we all was in the woods, and we go, you know, there was this house. And I mean, it, it was a old rinky dink. Y'all know the Scooby Doo house, the one with the you know, um, not the huge mansion, but the, like the mini mansion, and it looked like a cathedral or something. It was the house looked like that. So we end up going in. Five of us go in, but one ends up in the um, foyer area, and that was me. So I'm in there by myself. So I'm looking around, trying to find each and every one of them. So there, so there was a lot of rooms in this house. So each room I checked, I had, you know, nobody was there. But there was four specific rooms that I ended up looking in. And my friends were in the mirror. And when I, you know, when I go to them, they were saying some harsh and uh, disparaging things. And they turned their backs and walked away. So... Each one, each room I went to and I found one of my friends, that's what happened. So I leave out the house. So five went in, one came out. I asked Jamie, I was like, bro, what does this mean? You know, I just had a dream and I explained it to him. And he was like, man, I don't know. He was like, you know, dreams have a way of, you know, showing you some things that could happen. But, you know, I can't tell you what that meant. I think what it meant to me, because I lost all four of them. 
Except Ashley. I told y'all I got Ashley back like the same day. But the other three, I think that meant to me because I had a lot that was going on inside of me. The dream was representing and each uh, each one of them saying disparaging things um, in the mirror was telling me about something that was deep inside of me that I had to, um, you know, that I had to fix. And the more that I, you know, the more that I went over the years to, you know, fix, they started coming back. God took them out of my life for me to work on myself because if I sat there and relied on them to try to, you know, help me do some things, I probably wouldn't have never gotten to where I got and I probably would have heavily relied on them because I really love my friends, guys. They are my like they're my brothers. I mean, they we grew up together. Jamie and I grew up the most together because we met back in uh, 92, no, 91. We were in the same class and him and I spent the most time together. We grew up as brothers. Where he went, I went. Wherever I went, he went. I, we had our first, I was there for his first girlfriend. He was there for mine. But, but him and Ashley was there for a whole lot of that because of certain situations. <laughs> so um, those two was there for me during those times. And I think, you know, the dream showed me, like, you can't always depend on your friends. Yes, your friends are always supposed to be there through thick and thin. However, you have to work on yourself. How can you be a good friend to them if you can't work on, your, if you're not working on yourself? So that was another thing. So once I got back with them and I brought this up to Jamie, and he was like, you know, I can see what you were talking about, you know, he said that could have been a possibility. And so, because in the, on what I took it as was my friends betraying me, but that wasn't true. The things they were saying to me was things that was on the inside of me that I did not know at that time, but start to figure out over the years. And it was, uh, it was four things. It was, um, I had to talk about my molestation, first of all. I had to talk, um, I had to, you know, get courage. I had to get strength. And I had to get, you know, I had to become more dependable. I'm not saying I wasn't dependable, but it wasn't the, it wasn't to where it should have been. And the more that I worked on all of that, each one of them started coming back. Cornelius was the first to come back. Then Prentice, and then Jamie. All, and and I don't know why Jamie was the last one. And it was like, when I lost his number, the number that I knew for his mom went out of my head. The number that I called the most. The number that I had been calling from 92 to 2000, to we got our own cell phones, was out of my head. I could not remember that number. The day that I found my, uh, the day that I found my brother, it came back to me, and I called it, but it was, uh, it was disconnected. So I was like, it would, uh, you know, I was like, for all these years, I wouldn't be surprised if she changed the number. So, I mean, guys, that was how I lost and got my friends back, and that's kind of like where the story, you know, that's where the story kind of took place. It's because. Ninja, you know, I had to rework everything. Ninja Sun uh, had to go through so much. And if you guys read the first, uh, if you guys read the first book, you know that Dion went through a lot. Dion was going through um, the loss of his brothers. He did not know where they were. He did not know if they were alive or not. His parents neglected him to try to find them, and it was unintentional neglect, but not neglect nonetheless. Dion had to take on responsibilities um, that was supposed to be shared three ways. He was supposed to become, you know, he was supposed to be the leader of the Ninja Warriors. A, a secret team that was supposed to, you know, defend the planet and just the galaxy, the planet and the galaxy on behalf of the king, 
you know, in secret, where his brother, uh, when his brother Dorian, which is Sethrod, became supposed to become king, and his brother Darius, who was um, Archangelus, he was supposed to become the uh, the head guard, well, the head captain of the royal guard. So there was three responsibilities that each one of them was supposed to take. And as one as one succeeds, you know, except Ninja Sun. Now, Ninja Sun was not going to become the captain of the Royal Guard because he already had a team. And his team was, you know, with, you know, he was the leader of that team. So he was going through all of that. He had to gain respect for his, uh, for, he had to gain respect from his team. But he did not really start gaining the respect from the team until chapter four. And when he got to chapter four, when you get to chapter four, you would have seen the growth that he had, you know, that he went through from chapter one to chapter four. And when you see it, you'll understand why Dion went through so much. And that's technically what happened with me. I had to go through so much growth. And I had to gain so much respect. And, you know, my friends already respected me as I respected them. It was the fact that I had to work on other things in my life in order to, you know, have them back with me. And that's what Dion went through. Dion gained their respect, but I'm not going to sit here and spoil chapter four. So <laughs> you guys got to go read chapter four. So, let me, you know, I took down some notes and I wanted to, you know, talk about certain things, but I'm going to cut it off right here because the video is too long. So, this video is basically me telling you about the concept of the story, how the concept came into play, and how I, you know, um, got my friends back and, you know, how the story became strong. So, that's basically what happened guys and i wouldn't if i could change anything i would change that i would have never lost my friends but i know we have to go through certain things in life to make ourselves stronger and make ourselves more um you know more not powerful but more um i'm trying to think of the word that i want to say i want to you know you make yourself more sustainable make yourself not unbreakable because I don't think anybody's unbreakable. But you want to be more stable is what I was trying to think. And once you're there, you you know, you can get to where you want to go. And once I got myself stable, once I got my mind right, I went on and I, you know, and I had a swift kick in the butt from a friend who had me, you know, I, she told me, if you don't get your butt out here and do what you got to do, I'm going to tell everybody you're from. <laughs> And I thank her every day for it because look where we look where I am now. Four books, got my friends back. God is good, guys. He really is. And there's a lot more coming. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm coming back. I'm going to be talking about, you know, chapter one, what I thought about it, what I when I wrote it, and how good it was. And, you know, see if you guys can engage and see if you guys tell me your thoughts on it. But I want to know. Did this story inspire you guys? And what, um, with this story, what did you guys find out more about me? All right, guys. I love you all. I will see you guys later.